Okay, everybody, we're going to make a project from scratch. I've been getting a few questions lately on how I start my projects and how verse files are involved. And I think this should be a good series on why everybody should be using verse. So I'm going to start out this series with how I start a project and why I start a project like this. So almost all of my projects that I start for brand new maps, like real ideas, proper ones, I start with the island template and then I hit blank. I don't really use any of these. I use them sometimes for tutorials, but for actual maps that I make, I always start with blank. So I always create my maps with a team because I also have a laptop that I use to test. So I highly recommend that even if you're on your own, you create a team in the creator portal and then you can add a second account. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe you have a laptop that you can use just for testing that runs Fortnite or another computer. But definitely I always select a team and not just myself. Then when I have a project that I know I want to come back to, sometimes you don't, sometimes you're just playing, but I'm going to name it properly. So this one we're going to go tutorial and underscore starting verse game. So we'll name it something that we can understand. Again, it's a blank one. We hit create and that will take us into UEFN where we can then start creating something. Okay, so once it's started up a project, you're going to see we're going to have a couple of player spawners and then a lot of land area that we can do something with. Now, before I get into anything, I'm going to make my verse files. So I go over to verse explorer. If you can't see this here, then just go up to verse and select Verse Explorer. And that should show up this window somewhere. I keep mine docked down in here with my content browser and place actors, but you can put it anywhere you want. And then we're gonna right click here, add new verse file to project. Now, the first thing that I'm going to make is a game manager. Now, there are many ways in which you could define this name. There are naming practices. I'm very much a camel case naming conventioner kind of person, but other people will keep this all lowercase and then put a underscore in between. But I like camel case, so this is what I do. And then I just create this and then I'll add it in there. And then I'm gonna create one more, add new verse file. I'm gonna call this one custom player. And then I just create this one, even though it's not going to be a creative device, I just create it like this and then I go in and change it. Then I'm going to double click on game manager. So inside of here is the default code that comes with this. I immediately delete the comments that they've got in here because they're not my comments. I don't need them. And then I'll just go block like that. And that will get rid of the squigglies because if you have, you have nothing in here, it will give an error on this equals because every function that is inside of here must have a way to do a thing. So what we do is we just use block to say that we're going to do a thing in a block of code, but we just don't have that code. But this is what stops that little error from showing up. And then I'll open up my custom player. I'll delete the whole of on begin because I don't need any of it. I'll delete creative device. I'll delete this and I'll save this as well. So this is just going to be our basic class for our custom player where we can set up all kinds of things. The game manager is here. It's got nothing going on in it. And then we can do control shift B, which will build it. And you'll see down at the bottom, it'll say verse build successful. If you don't want to use the keyboard shortcut, head up to the top and use verse build verse code. And that will build the verse code for you. Building the verse code is a way for the game to compile your code in here, your verse code into a thing that the game can use, a module per se, that the game can use. Once you've done that, we go back into UEFN, we go to our content browser and inside of here, we open up our game content inside of creative devices. You will see game manager, drag that onto the stage and we can see that it's a little computer. Now you can actually change this mesh, but we're just going to leave this as is. The default is to show it in game. So I turn that off so it's not visible in game. And then this is where we're going to set up our editables to do things. So for example, we have two player spawners in here. So we'll head back into verse and we can set up editables here. So go editable. PS1 is a player spawner device. And then I copy this equals this. Now this is really easy to do if you've just got a couple or even just one, you got a one player game that you'll do this with, you'll put this in. Otherwise we'll use tags and I've done that in a whole tutorial. I'll link in the description below. So now that we've got our two editables here, we can build again and it'll maybe ask us to save. So save selected. And then if we come back to this, we can see that it says verse build successful. And then inside of UAFN, when we select our game manager, we can see that our PS1 and PS2 are here. 
and we can set that up as a player one spawn pad and player two spawn. And that's how I usually start all of my projects. So the way this works is that if you have a verse file that subclasses a creative device, then it's going to be something you can put on stage, you can put in the scene, you can set up editables and stuff like that for. If you have another one that is not subclassing the creative device, it is simply just an object where things kind of go and you can access it later. So if we wanted to, right here in the on begin, which is what runs when a game starts, we could say a new custom player colon, and then we'll go custom player because we're going to set the type of this object equals custom player like that. So now we have instantiated a brand new custom player object which right now does nothing, it's completely empty. But we would usually have a custom player have all kinds of little abilities and flags and variables that we would use for the player depending on the type of game. And that's how we would instantiate it here with its type. But it doesn't, it's not something that's going to end up on the stage unless you want that device to have editables and things that you can do for it. But in such a case, you wouldn't instantiate it like this, you would then it make it its own editable here. Like if it was a custom player like this, you could do this here, but you would attach it. So we can't even do this because it's not a creative device, but you would attach it then with an editable if the custom player was a creative device. Hopefully that makes sense because I've had people come up with, well, what, what is a custom player? How do you link it up together? Which is a very valid question and a good question, but you're really going to be doing it only with code, not visually. The only visual ones that you're going to link up into your game are going to be creative devices where you'll place them on the scene and then you'll set up your editables if there are any, or you'll just link them up into your main code with an editable or they just run. They just run. They, they'll also have their own on begin in them as well. So when they are on the scene, UEFN and Fortnite grab them and say, OK, hey, you're a device that lives in the scene. What do you do when you start up? And that's where the on begin will run. Hopefully that's a good little intro into the very, very basics of how to make verse files. I'm going to cover more stuff on why you want to use verse. I think everybody should use verse. I think bindings on devices are really inefficient and they're very, very hard to debug in the end compared to using verse. I think verse is much more powerful. You can do way more things with it. You can combine more things with it and it is just way better. So highly recommend you learn verse. I've got tons of tutorials here. There's tons over on YouTube. There's tons over on Epic site. So pick that up. But this is how I would start almost every project. I would start with my game manager and a custom player. Those are absolute musts in every game. Hopefully that has helped. If you have any questions, let me know anytime and I will see you guys in the next one.